<laughs> Ave, ve, ku, ve. The rich also talk. Or should I say, the rich have started talking. Ah, if you like, keep quiet. So they say, protest does not work. Protest does not. If you like, keep quiet. There is not somebody that has been protesting up and down. Protest necessarily doesn't mean that you have to be on the sea. But talking and keeping quiet and doing nothing. You will sit down there and they will truncate your destiny. They will do all sorts of things to you. Dan Gote is out there fighting for himself. Of course, people did join him to raise voices. He raised his voice. And now we have to, uh, Elumelu uh, coming out. So also uh, Tony Elumelu coming out to also put his voice out there. <laughs> Hey, hey, everybody go here now. Everybody go here now for body. We we'll all come out. I've said it before repeatedly that Nigeria does not need more activists. Nigeria needs more active citizens. Let citizens begin to stand up. Let citizens begin to speak up on issues. Let citizens begin to know that silence is not an option. If you like, keep quiet. They will kill you and say that you liked the death. They will destroy your life and say that you like the destruction. You wanted the destruction. Are you? I beg them for the destruction. Silence is not an option. But anyway, where am I getting at? People's Gazette has this. We you know Mr. Tony Elumelu. He did an investment. Uh, sorry, he did an interview recently. And uh, the headline here says, Buhari Kiari blocked my attempt to purchase oil feed, Elumelu said. Mr. Elumelu said his investment company, Hair Holdings, had approached the Buhari administration to acquire an oil field with an offer of about $2.5 billion around 2017. Well, you might be looking and say, well, they did him a good favor because 2017 till now, that 2.7 $2 billion dollars at that time, official rate of dollar was 400 naira. Even the unofficial black market was around 700 naira. Imagine now where you now you're having to pay 1,600 naira. So sometimes certain rejection isn't as uh, as bad as you think it is and between 2017 and now it's not too that uh, it's not it's like how many years 2017 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 seven years even up to my age i'm over 50 that's how i still count like a child it makes it easier for me anyway business tycoon tony elumelu said former president muhammad buhari and deceased Chief of Staff Abdel Kari rejected his company's request to buy an oil field despite raising billions of dollars to fund the deal. And this is the thing about Nigeria where we say rule of law is not there. Why, on what basis did they reject it? Why is it that the president and his uh, chief of staff are the ones who are making decisions on such a sensitive issue? How did that power come to him? Where are the institutions that are supposed to take this on? We're supposed to have a national assembly that's supposed to hold executive accountable but unfortunately we don't seem to to have that imagine the kind of investment imagine you know tony elumelu also by having an oil oil feed uh you know what it is uh uh excavating crude oil what do they do not refining before you refine it getting those crude, crude oil you know uh fr from the from the ground uh even if it's a refinery, having a refinery and all of that, the fact that government will not even need to go and be buying fuel and importing and paying subsidy, that should be a whole lot of things. But there are people who are making money from that and they don't want that to end in any way, you know, whatsoever. That's the oil cabal that Nangote uh, was, was talking about. But of course, Buhari and Abakari thwarted this, this deal according to, uh, to uh, Tony Elumelu. So it said, Mr. Elumelu's investment company, Hair Holdings, had approached Buhari administration to acquire an oil field with an offer of about $2.5 billion around 2017. However, the former president and his right-hand man, according to Mr. Elumelu, declined the offer, asserting that they could not allow an oil field of such strategic importance to fall into the hands of a private operator. Speaking with the Financial Times, Mr. Elumelu said the rejection defied logic, given that he would have been purchasing it from a foreign company. Mr. Elumelu, who chased, can you imagine? So, so, so the Buhari would prefer a foreign company to own an oil field than a Nigerian to the Elumelu to own a, a and oil field. This is these are some of the reasons why when this is oil field that is in the region of Tony of, of, of the Tony Elumelu. Can you imagine the people who are making decision? No, 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 no. The way the, on this Nigeria, 
We need to take it back to factory setting and reset a country that will work for everyone. These are two people who are not even from that. Let's even go down to their basic. They can make a decision and just deny how. Meanwhile, a foreigner is allowed to hold that particular, you know, uh, OFE. It tells you everything that you need to do about the criminal enterprise that is Nigeria and how we need to dismantle that uh, that enterprise. And dismantling that enterprise is not by also using criminality because at the end of the day, then we will become like them. It's by ensuring we ensuring we follow the process as it should be uh, uh, followed. Mr. Elumelu, who chairs the UBA, said he soon discovered the bane of the petroleum industry, oil theft, which was a major factor influencing international oil companies divestment from onshore assets. Having acquired a 45% stake in an oil uh, feed about three years ago, Mr. Ilumelu said he was impacted by the activities of criminal gangs who constantly robbed his pipe and stole enough crude uh, that caused his uh, company to shut down. You see at the end of the day. So sometimes when things don't work out for you, you don't go. Because this whole oil theft is crazy. And like Mr. Peter Obi has repeatedly said, there is no how anybody can come into Nigeria and steal oil without the people uh, in government giving them the permission to come in and steal oil. Oil is not something like you always say that you, like, it's not like sweet. You go to the grocery shop and pick it and put it in your pocket. It's something you have to bring a ship. You have to bring a ship. Before ship can enter the territorial waters of Nigeria, you must get permission from the Navy uh, of Nigeria. And of course, you know, the, 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 the chief of Naval staff has been indicted. Not this one, a lot of almost all of them, a lot of them that have come before have been indicted. They've been accused of, you know, being in connivance with the people who are stealing uh, oil. You actually see a lot of military personnel praying and doing everything they can to get themselves to be posted to Niger Delta because when you go there, you definitely are going to make a lot of money from the nefarious activities, you know, that, that are going on. So this is how crazy, this is how we are shortchanged, you know, going on. And most of this business, like always, they don't talk. They're afraid to talk. But right now, the rich are also talking. Uh -huh. Everybody go protest. So last, last, eh, all of us will be active citizens. We go hit that street. Nobody's going to protest on anybody's behalf. Everybody, now you go come on, do your protest. We go meet each other for a We will say, ah, uh ah, -uh, bros, you come. Since you're there here, I got you to come. That's how we do and get in Nigeria, proper Nigeria, you know, that that works for all of us. The frustration prompted him to tweet in 2022, how can we be losing over 95% of oil production to thieves? So all this money is that, and we've said it many times before, let me finish all that, said, you know, all this money that we are borrowing from people, from foreign banks, IMF, World Bank, Kiniko, we have it. in The oil that is being stolen is enough to fund all of that one. We have the money to fund a lot of things that we have, but they are being stolen, and people keep quiet and allow it to be. Mr. Peter Obi kept talking about oil theft, oil theft, oil theft, all throughout the campaign. And it was adamant what he was going to do. Yes, some people will come and, and be calling him weak. And they think that strong men are the ones who are criminal men because they are able to rig election. You understand? For, for them, that's no. Strong men are, are the ones who are able to speak on issues irrespective. Whether it's going to win election or not win election, he's going to speak on the issues. And he did. And since after election, nobody is talking about the issue of uh, oil theft anymore. There's been silence on, on that whole on, on that on that on that whole matter. Mr. Lumelu said the government should know, they should tell us the masterminds behind the oil theft. Our security agency, agencies should tell us who is stealing our oil. You bring vessels to our territorial waters and we don't know. Mr. Buhari's spokesperson, Garba who did not immediately respond to uh, People's Gazette request for comments on Mr. Lumelu's claim as SMS and WhatsApp messages sent to him were unanswered. But hey, that's the Nigeria that we have today. In Nigeria, we want to buy oil feed from foreign company and the and the pres and the president will say that oh that Nigerian he will not allow because it will fall into foreign hand no it's a private hand but the foreign company is private no Buhari should have had the guts to have just told Mr Tony Elumeli what it is he will not allow it to fall into a southern hand maybe a, a Niger Delta person a South South person that's just simply what it is we have to say things the way they are otherwise we just keep going around in circles and they are just having a country that is only working for a few instead of working for all of us. We must get a Nigeria where the child of nobody can become somebody without knowing anybody. Until we get there, all of us are slaves in our own country.